This video was done over a couple of weeks. I got sick in between and the timeline may be a little bit confusing. It's not this bus I'm referring to, though it may look like it. It's the blue bus with a white interior. I'm a nomad. I'm traveling around working on this current bus and a couple others. So uh, just in case that's confusing, that'll keep you in line. If you've been following along with the channel and with my brand, you know that I've got seven acres in Tennessee that I've been trying to get to for close to three years now. A friend of mine recently expressed some interest in living at my, at my place for a season and was looking in several options. He was asking what the best living situation would be like, whether it's an RV or a camper or something like that, a fifth wheel. And of course, I pointed him towards considering something like a schoolie. I explained to my friend that I feel like a bus would be a much better option, especially if we found a good deal on something that's more appropriate for parking than it is for driving around. So the following story kind of covers that, uh, this whole venture of how that went down. And we're down a water pump it, it seems. So we're going to dive into this here soon. Way up there. We are currently parked at a park. Going to take a nap. Gonna hit it real hard tonight. Try to get through Chicago. This bus is a 2000 Bluebird. I believe the designation is like CE 2000 or something like that. But it's a front engine, Cummins 5.9 24 valve. That's a very solid, reliable known engine. The transmission is an Allison 3060. Currently has just the five gears, but if you program it, uh, get it programmed by someone, you can get that six gear unlocked in. You'll be rocking at better RPMs when you're cruising on the interstate. This bus has a roof raise. They did it below the windows. That's pretty solid. Certainly added value there. Now they use self tappers or these types of screws like roofing screws, which isn't preferred over rivets, but it'll do. Paint job, not so awesome. You look close, you can see some, some apparent issues with it. Roof rack, that's Unistrut. That's my least favorite way of doing mounting solar and doing a roof rack in general. So this is the first walkthrough. I'm gonna be very simple with this. If then go back and show you a little bit more of the close-ups. So we were told from the cell at the door jam, it's all uh, rotted basically. So it's pretty, pretty tight. They have done the entrance, the steps. We've got flooring done. Got one inch of insulation, then the uh, plywood floor, then this flooring. And they did do this flooring cut around the furniture rather than laying it all down and then building on top, which is the proper way. The walls, everything's painted white. It looks real solid. There is spray foam behind the walls. And the uh, roof height solid. The roof height is wonderful. I can, I'm 5'7", but I can put my fist in the air and I'm still not touching it. Come, came with a TV. Punched a hole there for a diesel heater. And we got cabinets. Old school Magic Chef propane oven stove. Fridge was included. Upper cabinets. This needs to be completed, but it is a working Max Air fan. Apparently they had some electrical issues, so they had to go cut some of this out, which allowed me to see a little bit of how they did the insulation. Right now I've got some things plugged in down here, but
kind of a do-it-yourself combo uh, compost toilet flushless and the epoxy rock flooring in the bathroom shower I think this was designed for kids got a couple bunks with some sliding closers This space also had the sliding closers, but I removed those. They were just making a lot of noise and causing a lot of trouble, and I didn't really understand why they were here. Both the front and the rear have these skylights, which, man, lets in a lot of light. I kind of dig it, but they're going to have to be sealed up better. They're not leaking right now, but they're going to need some work. did come with a solar system it also needs some work we've got a mess back here but queen size bed we got a better mattress for this thing but it comes with a queen size came with a queen size mattress but we just got a, a nice one instead we've got a partition here on the slider and the mini split did come with a 12K mini split, not fully installed. It seems like it was an afterthought, so it's a bit of a mess for how that's going in. So that's gonna be something I've gotta resolve later. Receptacles near the bed. We've got a light back here, but I see no place where that's uh, got power. So we gotta tie that in with a switch. Water tanks down here, 100 gallons. I believe it's a hundred gallon underneath as well. This space is window deleted, drawer, cabinet, clothes, hanger. This bus was found on Facebook and I reached out to the owner, had a lot of conversations over, over Messenger, and then eventually he got us on the telephone, so we had an actual conversation. He kind of insisted that we talk on the phone. So I th thought that was really great. He sent me an entire list of what was wrong, what needed work, what was incomplete. So I think that's a really good sign when you're purchasing a bus. Ask all the questions, ask the difficult questions, get as many pictures as you possibly can. That allows you to make the best assessment of a bus. Now this bus looks great. It's built, I would put it in the 80 percentile range of quality built buses. But there's a lot of things about this bus that are not appropriate for a bus made for living on the road. A lot of the build, the construction is basically residential style, which does not translate over perfectly to what it takes for a bus to survive the rigors of the road. You can see in the close-ups, there's a lot of cracks in the caulking and the seams, and all that's really common in residential in a place that's not moving and wiggling and, and torsioning like a school bus does. The electrical was was pretty solid. It was wired properly to the panel. I have a separate video on that because if you get that wrong, you can electrify the entire shell of the bus, everything that's metal. So that was done correctly. Um, they had some improper grounding with the solar system. They're pulling off of a, a single battery versus through the battery bank. That's not appropriate, but we've got small loads right now, so I'm not addressing that fully. With this bus, they deleted a lot of the windows uh, but man, when you're doing a roof raise and going that far, I'm a big fan of deleting all of the windows, skinning over, and putting in RV windows. Uh, but this is still pretty solid. The bus was insulated with spray foam, and I think it's a bit light what they put in there. The seller told me they used two kits. So a bus like this probably needs three, maybe even four if you're really going for it but I'd still say whatever they did is gonna be superior to the equivalent space used for something like fiberglass. Because the intent of this bus was to be living in while parked, um, there's a lot of things that I kind of accepted even though it wasn't ideal. There were a few things that I found out that I didn't know after the fact that it would not have changed my decision based on the price that I paid. Uh, I saw that the dash was built, they, they did wood and they actually cleaned up the dash which is pretty uncommon. Um, but in doing so, they blocked the vents that would be for driving in cold weather and having, having uh, defrosters. At first, I thought, well, I'm going to have to fix that. I'm going to have to cut some holes and redo that. 
but then I actually found out they deleted the entire heating system, so it's kind of a moot point at this, at this uh, stage. That also means you're not going to be driving in cold weather, and so it kind of puts us in the three season bus range uh, for driving around. Now, since I'm going to be having this bus parked and, and living in it, uh, or my friend living in it, that's not a huge ordeal. I'm not super disappointed about that. But it's something you want to consider if you are purchasing a bus that's going to be on the road long term in multiple seasons. This bus came with a 12K mini split partially installed mounted in the rear. Now with a bus like this what you really want to do is um, especially for hot weather you're going to want to have a 9K in the rear in the smaller area and then a 12K is appropriate for the front. So I'm going to have to redo the front even though it looks real good. That means there's going to have to be some deconstruction of what's in here in order for me to do that in a clean manner that doesn't look too ugly. After discussing the bus, getting all the photos, all the information we could, we struck a deal, came up with an agreement, and my friend flew from New Jersey, I flew from Florida all the way out to Colorado. Then we decided we're going to tag team driving this thing back across the country. Now before this trip, I told my friend to have a few extra thousand dollars in case we need to do tires. It's very common that we may get on the road and be like, you know what, let's go ahead and do the tires. Uh, we did decide to do that. Within about 200 miles, we started looking around and I started finding a place that would have a few tire options that is credible because you don't want that to happen in the middle of Kansas, um, although we wanted doing it in the middle of Nebraska. So we set in for the night after leaving about 5 p.m. We set in for the night at around 12, I believe it was. We parked. We found a place just off the side of the road. We parked, and somewhere in that last 10, 15 minutes, I was watching the engine temps, and I saw that they were climbing a little bit. So it was just something I noted in my mind. The following day, we woke up. We drove the next 20 minutes to uh, the closest town that was a town we had selected that had several options for shop. At that shop, we went in, asked them if we could get some tires. They were pretty slim, but decided, hey, we'll get, some, we'll get two tires on here. We can manage that. So, um, and the logic with the tires was we're about to go 2,000 miles. If we have a tire go on the side of the road, especially one of the front ones, we're, we're looking at you know a dangerous situation, but also we're looking at replacing a single tire for probably close to the cost of a single tire or a pair of tires under our own conditions on our own terms so the bus the bus tires were way old especially the front ones i believe the rear ones are rear retreads so i wasn't as concerned about their those but you also have two on each side so if you lose one you're still tracking straight and it's something you can limp into the next town potentially. With the front tires, the steer tires, that's not the case. They were very old, dry rotted, and we just knew that, hey, this could save us a, a big inconvenience and ordeal uh, down the road, so let's go ahead and replace them. The cost on that was right around $1,400 install balance for both of them. As we pulled the bus into the shop, though, we saw a puddle of uh, radiator fluid, some coolant, on the ground. So that immediately was like, oh, well, there's our, there's our cooling issue. That's why we were, we were flirting with the overheating. So we get it in there. They did not have time to address that for us. And usually I, I do this work myself, but I don't have any tools with me. So I wind up calling around. Uh, we couldn't get parts until the, like four days later or something like that. So turns out a Cummins dealer was just down the road, not even a mile. The tire shop we were at let us use their shop truck drove down the road to Cummins, got the part we needed, and then they connected us with a friend down the road who, who has a shop that they are opening up to the public. It's like a fleet management shop, but they're now open to the public. And they got us in, and actually for a killer deal, we got that water pump, pump taken care of, swapped out. We got the uh, bus service with all the grease fittings underneath, and we had them adjust the brake, uh, the slack adjusters on the brakes, which is something I, I have yet to do myself. So all that to say, we got these essentials done and it was under $2,000 additional on top of the, the, the bus cost. So that was kind of built into negotiations, that was built into the trip. So we just have to be prepared for that. Spending your last dime on the bus and hoping you're going to make it across the country is a fool's errand. I do not recommend that. Sometimes it's pretty evident when this is a person's first bus. And while they did a solid job with most of this, there's a lot of things that don't make a lot of sense to me. I'm not a fan of the straight galley. Um, while that's a preference, it's something that's nice to break up if you can. It makes the place more homey and oftentimes is a, more, uh, is a better use of space. So we've got a counter and it's on top of the front wheel well. 
We've got a couch over here, but the couch is very shallow. So sitting in it's not comfortable and it, it's just, it's actually awkward, not all that usable. What I probably would have done and may do in the future, not immediately, is make this more like an L coming this way and then have this couch on this side also make an L. So a lot more usable seating than like a TV up there in the corner or something could be done or on that wall. Um, it did come with this small guy right here, but so that's a possibility. And somehow to make this more usable, that may be appropriate. And all those things, some of that is kind of built into say running a mini split there. If I have to deconstruct this wall to run the pipes, run the uh, copper lines, I may just go ahead and pull this out, cut my line, and then maybe do some accent wood up there to, to kind of clean up what the mess I made and to break up the space a little bit. It's a bit sterile in my opinion. We've also got all this space right here that's just not really usable. I don't know what the intent was, but without seating, without a kitchen table or something, um, yeah, I'm not really sure about that. This back area with the two windows and the center door, very common for it to be unfinished because it's hard to figure out what exactly to do with that. My preference is just to delete it all, all the windows, and then insulate over them. That's just simple. Uh, you do a roof raise, do all that, then put in an RV window facing the rear, much simpler and everything kind of gets completed. Because right now, this room, it's all insulated, right? Except for that entire back down to the floor. After casually looking for a couple of months, I actually found an ad myself on one of the Facebook groups. I reached out to the owner and we started negotiations and conversations. I got a ton of photos from him of the bus and of the build as it was being built. That's super helpful. Now I realize there are a lot of videos out there that discuss how to select the right bus. Um, in fact, Chuck Cassidy has a great one. I recommend you taking a look at that. I'll put that in the link below. Now that covers all your basics, picking a bus that doesn't have a lot of rust, a bus that has some decent maintenance record if possible, and a bus with the proper engine transmission and something that, that's the right length and tires and he covers all of those basics. So um, all of those things are something that we did. So we made sure that the bus was in fact rust free. We made sure that it had a good engine and transmission and didn't have crazy high mileage. In this case, it had 165,000 miles. Now, after all of that, which applies to a new bus or a already built bus, now you have to determine if this built bus meets the requirements and standards that you are expecting and hoping for in a built. This is not the case for most schoolies. In fact, most people are bailing out of their schoolies that they began building because they either built it poorly or they got overwhelmed with a project and just bailed out. And oftentimes it's just left in a mess. Now that said, there are cases where a bus was built well or well enough that you can perhaps snag one of these buses up for a really good price and complete it yourself. This story is something like that. I'm not sure the exact circumstances around the, those who built the bus, but they did a good job at so many things and all the things that they did poorly are things that I can sort out myself. And one of the big things with a, with a bus to start with is insulation, right? If you have this fully built out bus, not this one, but the, the one in the video coming, and it was not insulated, especially the, the ceiling, then you're basically stripping the entire bus down, destroying the build in order to replace that, uh, the insulation. So skipping insulation is a no-go for me. I don't want any bus that's lacking insulation. And most people, when they sell their first perfect bus, it's a bus that did not get insulated from the start. And you'll notice that even though their first bus is perfect, when they go to build their second bus, they're gonna do it very different. And they're going to do all the things they did not do in their first bus. So beyond that, you've got plumbing. Plumbing is a big deal and there's a way to do it well and there's a way to do it improperly. This bus was not done very well. I can just tell by looking at it that it is not gonna flow properly. And so a lot of that's gonna to have to be addressed. However, it does already come with two 100 gallon tanks, which is some value. The water heater on this bus was placed in a spot that I very much dislike and it was done poorly. They just kind of slapped it in there. It seems like they got towards the end of this project and started slapping things in and that probably led to part of the, part of the equation of them bailing out of this bus. 
Another common mistake, they did some grinding up front and the glass, the front glass is all melted. So if you take a, grindy, a grinder, the grinding wheel, and you know all those sparks you see coming off there, if that contacts any of the glass, it's going to melt the glass. And what that does, that leaves the surface of it um, with a bunch of flakes on it basically, and you can feel it with your fingernails and slide on it. And it'll cause refraction issues when you're driving. It's not so great. So I'm gonna have to replace both of those front windshields if I'm really gonna be driving this thing around. Now I've got some notes here I'm going to look at as we try to go through and assess what the value of a bus like this would be. This bus would be very different if the bus was turnkey ready to go and hit the road, but it's not, right? So a lot of things are incomplete, a lot of things need to be redone, even though the core and the shell, all that's pretty solid. So right off the bat, a bus like this, now that I know uh, that it is in fact reliable, the engine's running well, the transmission, everything's operating. I'm gonna put that at like four or 5K, we'll just say 5K. So that value, 5K for a bus. You probably aren't gonna to find too many buses below 5K that are really rust-free, solid, reliable, good brakes, all that, so we'll call it 5K. The solar parts on this bus that came with it, uh, I'm very familiar with all that. It's Victron, it's Battleborn. We're gonna put that at 6K value. The roof raise, uh, it's not as crazy as some of the other ones, but it is a solid, well-done roof raise. And I know that if you're going to get that done professionally at a place like uh, uh, schoolie.com or Chuck Cassidy, that you're going to pay 10 k for one of those, right? Now, they're going to do it differently. They're going to skin over the windows. A lot of things would probably be done uh, a bit cleaner and a bit better. So I'm just going to put this one at 5 k kind of an arbitrary number, but about half the cost. Next up is a spray foam. Those two kits, I think they're gonna be like seven or $800 for, for a kit. And you've also got the insulation on the floor, all that. So let's just call that 2K. Maybe that's a little generous, but we'll call it 2K for now. Then you've got the 12K mini split. It's partially installed. We'll just act like it's just a mini split. And I don't know if that was an $800 model or a $1,200 model, but I'm gonna put that at 1K for even numbers. You've also got two water tanks, You've got a water heater and you've got, you know, some PEX tubing. You've got the pump, the accumulator. We'll, we'll uh, air, air a little low on that one and call it 1K. Well, all of those things come up to $20,000, right? And that's not including any of the building on the inside. That's not including the refrigerator. That's not including the max air fan. It's not including uh, wiring or any of that. So we kind of know that this bus is pretty easily worth 20K. Of course, at 20K, you're not getting a turnkey bus that you're going to hit the road with. However, for another probably 10K of work and time and effort, sweat equity, um, and monetary investment, then you could have a bus that is, in fact, ready for the road. You could add and upgrade a lot of things later. It has the core, it has the essentials, and you know, you'll have to fight a few things as you get it going, but that's pretty reasonable. Now, if you were to yourself build a bus like this with all these features, get all that stuff right the first time that I'm not having to undo now, you're, you're looking at a bus that would be very reasonable to be in the 40 to 50K range, uh, if perhaps not more, once proper solar, the other mini split and all that's in place. In my opinion, if you were to have this bus done right from the start with all the features and, and whatnot working with a larger solar system, especially one that can power both of the mini splits, which really gets into like the fifteen to twenty thousand dollar price range, you've got a bus that you're looking around the eighty thousand mark pretty easily. But in this case, someone's going to buy a bus like this. They're going to take on the project and put all that investment of time and energy and redoing things and, and added expense to get it up to maybe something more like a $40,000 bus. Now, if you were buying a school bus that was just slapped together and maybe they did some cosmetic things that you really, really love, that's, that's a trap. And it happens to so many people. It means that, yeah, it looks cosmetically good. They made it look uh, they gave it that nice looking theme. There's a lot of builders who do this, who make the bus look really good, but they do not perform. They use either no insulation, leave the factory insulation, or they install like fiberglass, the cheapest options, right? And then they make everything look cosmetically presentable, but do it in a manner where it does not perform. I would run from that bus all day long. You're not going to be happy with it unless you're going to buy that thing for dirt cheap and drive around and, and but you're just not gonna, you're not gonna be living in that bus full time for multiple seasons. And there's a big difference between a four season bus uh, that's, that's capable of four seasons 
off the grid, meaning running from solar, from the battery, uh, and managing four seasons, right? Because any bus, a factory bus with the seats pulled out is a four season bus if you blast it with unlimited power, AC, and you have an unlimited heat source, right? But the game is a four season bus for off the grid, solar, battery, diesel, heaters, that kind of thing. I hope you found this video helpful. I've not seen a video or a guide, anything like this, that helps kind of explain how to assess and value a bus before purchasing it. Uh, if you have any ideas or comments, I would love to do a cleaner version of this in the future uh, with a more comprehensive list of things to look for and value. So write them in the comments below and we'll have some discussion about that.